Hello, my name is Robin Henkes. I'm the game director of Albion Online. And today I want to talk to you about a new feature that we're bringing to Albion in the upcoming Hector update. It's called the Black Market. The Black Market is the answer to a question we've been asking ourselves for a very long time now. It's how do you have cool equipment drops in a game where all items are supposed to be player crafted? And our answer is you have the players craft the drops themselves. And this is exactly what the black market does. Um, so the black market is a new type of building that will be located in Kerlian, uh, which is the central city of the royal area uh, in Albion. It's a somewhat shady city. It's uh, you know a place where a lot of criminals hang out and where players with not such a good reputation uh, still get to enter. And it's where the black market merchant has chosen to set up his little uh, store or marketplace. Uh, what he does from there is that he buys items from players and he redist redistributes these items to the different mob factions in the world of Albion. And then these items get to drop in the world. Now let's take a look at that in detail. Um, first, let's look at how the black market buys items. So most important thing to know is that the black market doesn't work like a typical NPC merchant in other games. He doesn't just have a price for an item and then buys an infinite amount of these. Instead, the black market always requires a buy order to exist. Now, that means the price for an item on this market will always be based on supply and demand. Demand is generated whenever a player uh, kills a mob. There's a certain chance that uh, a buy order will be generated. And once there is a certain number of active buy orders for a particular item, uh, the price offered for the buy order will increase. So um, basically the, the, the player's actions of killing creatures will continuously create buy orders on the black market. On the other side, players can go to the black market and they can sell and fulfill these buy orders directly or they can set up their own sell orders so that they will be selling at the time once the market offers the appropriate price. This means that effectively the black market is interacting with the players in the same way that the player-driven market is. Um, we're balancing this overall system in such a way that uh, the orders generated on the market always correspond to a certain percentage of the silvers dropped by mobs. So if a mob would normally drop 100 silver, we're taking 20% of that silver away and we're generating a buy order of, of equal value. So um, that guarantees that the overall system, uh, silver in the system remains stable. Now, how do the items actually get to the players? That's actually very simple. The moment the uh, black market buys an item, so a buy order is fulfilled, it increases its stock for the items. And every time a creature would roll for this particular item and the stock is there, then uh, the item simply drops. Um, what's really nice about this is that we can also use the black market as an item sink. The black market is, as I said, a bit shady and uh, there's, uh, there's a certain amount of loss in the system. So not all items actually make it to the factions. And this allows us to, for the first time in Albion, uh, introduce a true low tier item sink. Now, as you know, items always get destroyed in Albion. When, uh, when a player is killed in PvP, they lose their equipment. But overall, the amount of items produced on the lower tiers is way higher than the amount of items destroyed through PvP. And the black market allows us to take a portion of those items out and therefore guarantee a constant demand of this item, of these items. Another really cool thing that black market allows us to do is that we can generally increase the amount of item drops in the game. Previously, dropping items was always a very questionable thing because it was a trade-off between uh, giving PvE players something really rewarding and undermining the crafters' efforts of actually making these items. With the black market, we can now actually 
have a good amount of PvE item drops that reward the players who go into dungeons while not affecting the crafting economy at all. And that is, that is actually very, something we're very excited about. Finally, the black market allows us to do something that, that uh, we've been wanting to do for a while, which is to actually remove the need for essences in refining. Essences are, um, uh, were a bit of a band-aid fix. We wanted to connect the PvE activities with the crafting activities and uh, the essences do that, but we feel that with the arrival of the black market we have these two loops connected closely enough so that we can remove the need for essences in refining and uh, find a new use for essences. It's also important to know that the black market allows us to remove refined resources as a mob drop. Basically everywhere in, in chests or in hell gates where you would previously find uh, refined resources, you'll now have the chance to find drops from the black market. All in all, we're really excited for the black market. The amount of trade incentive it adds to transport goods to Kerlian, which in turn creates a lot of PvP opportunities. The, uh, the need for crafters to supply items of all tiers to keep the system going and thus creating a lot of demand for crafters to actually make money off their action. And finally, of course, the amount of items we can drop with the system in, in PvE so that you can finally get those really cool drop rewards when you play Albion's Dungeons. All of that makes me really excited and uh, I'm very much looking forward to you checking it out in the Hector update coming to Albion Alliance soon.